In classical time series decomposition, what remains as the irregular series is modeled with stochastic processes. So let's start from the basic terms and concepts. So stochastic, or in other words, random process with state space Z, is a collection of Z valid random variables indexed by a set T, which represents time. So we will just have a set of values Z, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And very important parameters for stochastic processes are covariance, variance, and correlation. So if we think of x and y as two random variables with joint distribution function f, x, y, so then covariance of two variables x, y can be calculated as expectation of multiplication of the differences of each variable with its own expectation. Now if in that covariance, we don't have two different variables, but rather the same variable. So then we land at variance, and that basically simplifies the formula to this. And then correlation coefficient between the two random variables basically means their covariance rescaled by their standard deviations. Because this one is a variance of x, and this one is variance of y, and square root of those creates multiplied standard deviations. So let's look at some properties of covariance. If we have covariance of sum of two variables with a third variable, then that is basically the sum of individual covariances. If we have covariance where one of the variables is multiplied with a constant, then that means we can take that constant out and we remain with usual covariance of those two variables. And finally, covariance is symmetric, so covariance xy is actually equal covariance yx. Now, if the individual expectations of x and y are actually equal to zero, then covariance of the two variables simplifies to just expectation of x times y. And then we can say that x and y are independent if and only if covariance missing here, covariance of them is zero, meaning that that expectation of x times y is zero. So these features are important in identifying stochastic parameters for stochastic processes. So mean value of a stochastic process is just the expectation of the random variable. Covariance of the random variable is basically covariance of that random variable at two time points. Then variance, of course, is covariance at the same time point, and then correlation coefficient is that covariance rescaled by variances at the two specific time points. And these stochastic parameters are quite important in identifying which type of stochastic process we are dealing with. An important term in treating stochastic processes is so-called stationarity. So a formal definition of strong stationarity is that if we consider joint distribution for a particular random variable for time points k plus 1, k plus 2, and so on, then the stochastic process can be considered stationary if the mean value of the process remains constant over time and then if the covariance of the process at specific times and the times ahead also remains constant over time. So that basically means that the variance of the process remains at a similar level throughout all the measurements. So what are examples of non-stationarity? For instance, in here we have some electricity spot prices in the upper graph, and you can see that the mean value changes over time. So if we were, for instance, to split this series in half, or maybe in more slices, and then calculate mean value of this part, this part, th this one, then those values would be different. So as we move on, basically you could say that the mean value is growing over time, or at least changing significantly. So this is an evidence of non-stationarity. The second case is an example of series where you could argue that the mean value actually remains constant over time because the series varies around zero. However, the variance is not, because you could see those clusters with higher variance and then clusters of lower variance over time. And this is also called variance clustering in time series. So that is also evidence of non-stationarity. We have already mentioned autocorrelation function when talking about seasonality. So now let's bring it more formally. Autocorrelation coefficient between data points xt and xt plus k is expressed with this formula. So that basically tells us how much specific observations which are k points apart are correlated with each other. So normally for a time series you can draw this so-called autocorrelogram where for every particular line you then give the value of autocorrelation. And the first lag should be, of course, at value 1, because that's the series correlated with itself, which means perfect correlation. 
a very specific type of stochastic process is white noise. So that's the one where the observations come from normal distribution with zero mean and constant standard deviation. This square should actually be there. So when each next observation of our random variable is actually a normally distributed random number with constant variance, then we say that this series of observations that one, two, three, and so on is white noise. And what is specific for white noise is that its covariance coefficient equals to variance when t equals s and then it is zero when it's not. And because a, t are independent, so then variance of a, t is just a sigma square, but we also know that expectation of a, t is zero. So that means that the covariance of a, t, a, s equals multiplication of a, t, a, s, which is zero. And that comes from the independence. So now if you have some sample white noise series, if you plot autocorrelation, it should look roughly like that. The blue lines here represent the significance level so you could argue that maybe this is actually significant but if you think of the scale of this value it's actually insignificant and remember that this was just a sample which had limited length because the more observations you have from white noise the more confidence you have about lack of autocorrelation and then following from white noise if you now think of a sum of observations that come from white noise then we produce so-called random walk so it basically means that whatever location we have we make a random step in either direction and you can keep moving ahead so it means that if we were to generate many different paths in here they could easily cover wider and wider area as we move away from the origin and in the case of random walk the autocovariance function gamma ts is actually t times the variance